So this is Fable Anniversary, which is a fully remastered version of Fable The Lost Chapters, coming out on Xbox 360. We've taken the Fable Lost Chapters content, uh, we're bringing it through Unreal 3, so it's a brand new engine. We are remodeling absolutely everything, so it's not just a quick HD port of upgraded textures. We're really going to town on this and doing justice. Our fans have been crying out for us to, to make this game for some time, so we really want to make sure that we create something that's really awesome for them. So I'm just going to play through, this is the Bandit Camp quest. So those who are familiar with the original game, this is where you're coming back to find your sister, who you uh, originally thought was, was dead, and you're now trying to find out exactly where she is and what happened to her. So I'm going to run through and Ted could maybe talk about our new smart glass app that we've got. Yeah, like Craig mentioned, uh, this isn't just a port, we're really investigating new technologies as well. So one of the really cool things that came out of last year was uh, smart glass for the Xbox 360. And you can see here I'm on my uh, Surface RT, I've got it connected to the Xbox and I'm looking at the Fable 1 screenshot of the location that I'm in. So it gives the player some nice context. There'll be loads of these dotted throughout the application on Smart Glass where the player can just look at any particular area at any time. You can actually see as well that my hero is, uh, is down here uh, running around. So it's a nice piece of tech and we look forward to continue to, to innovate in this area as well. Yeah. So our new lighting system that we get with Unreal gives us really fantastic dynamic lights all throughout the level. You can see all these torches lit here when the guys run down. You can see them being lit up. When you're casting magic, you can see them illuminating character and all the environments around about. So we're really happy with Unreal. It's given us a really fantastic looking game that we still feel looks like the original, still feels like the original, but with much higher fidelity. So with this particular chest that Craig's opening, I can actually click on it on the map and actually see which content's in it. We're, we've partnered with Prima to actually deliver this Smart Glass app because we want it to feel like it's part strategy guide, part interactive map. And some of the other features that we're currently working on is even the ability to actually take a screenshot from your game, which sends it to the application, and you can then upload it to your favorite social network or even to the new Lionhead forums. Uh, I'm getting up to some combat here. I'm gonna quickly show some of the magic. Some of the big questions we've got from the fans was the, uh, you know, the essential things like can the hero still fart? <laughs> yes, he can. I can now confirm that's definitely definition. still in there. <laughs> uh, so we've actually gone through and taken all the source assets for the audio, and we've been able to bring them back in and remaster them so that all the audio, uh, it's, ex you know, it's the same sound design, it still sounds like the same game, but it's much higher fidelity again. We've got Russell Shaw, who's our composer. He's taken all the original music, and he's now working them through into four-channel surround sound. So um, if you've got yeah, a... Nice. If you've got a nice surround sound kit at home, when you get to play this, you'll, the music will really immerse you into the, the game as well. You can still kick heads as well. How brave are you feeling, Craig? Uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. A, Let me see. Kicking the head. Roll back. Oh, oh no. Stab. That's it. Stab the, stab the he dead guy. He might not be dead. He's, <laughs> he's got no head, but you can't be too sure on these things. No, oh, not today. I can't do this. Can't do no, this. Mind. Is he going to do it? No, oh, no. He's gone. Not today. We've got to get the chest. Yeah, it's been really fun to uh, go back to obviously a fan favorite of our, of our titles. I actually worked on the original game back in 2004, so for me it's also a really nice trip sort of down memory lane and you can see actually there the God Rays coming down. That's definitely something we didn't have in 2004. Obviously widescreen as well, we take it for granted these days, but uh, back, back in 2004 I certainly didn't have a, you know, a nice 40 inch flat screen TV. Yeah, and the great thing with this project as well, but uh, we've got a real mix of people on the project. Some people like Ted have been here for you know, 10, 12 years, worked on the original title. Um, and then you've got other people that are actually quite new to the franchise, but it's great to get their input, um, get some fresh eyes. Yeah. So we really feel like the, the projects are going to come together and uh, be faithful to the original, but you know, still look like an amazing Xbox 360 title. Obviously, it's really important that we appeal to the existing fan base, but we also want it to stand up on its own as an Xbox 360 title because 
this E3 has actually shown to us that there's actually a lot of people out there that have played Fable 2 and Fable 3 but have never played Fable 1 because it's never actually been available on the Xbox 360 platform so for them they will be treating this as a brand new game so the expectations are up there with uh, the best of the games that are out at the moment. Gonna switch to bow here. Oh yeah, do some bow combat. You can still lock on to the players. Nice. This is a question again people were very keen about making sure the controls are uh, remain faithful um, but we're actually looking to bring in some extra options to it as well um, Ted again had worked on all the fables and I think the, the fable 2 controls were actually really well received yeah we really tried to pioneer something different with fable 2 and fable 3 I don't know if, if anyone remembers but we so one of the big key points behind Fable 2 was our one button combat system and uh, we feel that that actually created something that was really intuitive to pick up but also still allowed the depth so what we want to do with Fable Anniversary is still provide that uh, control scheme to the player but of course if they want to they can still play it in its purest uh, control form so we're not getting rid of it by any means and of course also being on a 360 it also means we can have achievements for the first time uh, in Fable uh, Lost Chapters, so we're currently working on those at the moment. We've got some plans uh, of uh, how we can get the community involved in those, which uh, we'll be revealing at some point over the next couple of weeks, so that's really exciting. Uh, and, you know, it's such a big fan title that we want to use the fans as much as possible for this. We've actually got the Demon Door up here on the left now. <laughs> There's this actually amazing video, uh, or I guess if anyone out there just remembers the Demon Doors, uh, from Fable 1, but their lips never actually closed when they were talking to you. And again, you take it you take it for granted nowadays, but uh, you know, the facial animations on this guy, the lip syncing, the eyebrows, the all the facial movement is, you know, really up to today's standards. So for anyone that's not familiar with the Demon Door, uh, they're these mythical doors that uh, if you answer their riddle essentially uh, the door will open and let and let you gain entry so this particular guy he wants you to dress up in multiple sets of clothes uh, I think three different sets once you've uh, once you've worn each set in front of him he will eventually open and let you in and on the other side is this sort of fairy tale crazy world they're all very bizarre but, uh, the level designers always have really good fun making the levels inside because we just throw all conventions out the window and uh, just create something fun Ah yes, that's a very good point, Craig. I can actually show you on Smart Glass the strategic element to this. So if I click on the Demon Door on Smart Glass, it actually tells me, using the strategy guide portion of the uh, of the application, that I require the Bright Plate suit, the Dark Wheel user suit, and the Bandit suit. So for anyone who you know is unsure or they're stuck on this on any particular Demon Door, they can just find out the extra information that they need. I was just going to highlight the, um, the the player's armor here, the shoulder piece. Um, it's been great to actually come back and add in the, the high definition detail to yeah. these, these outfits and uh, with one of the main characters from the Lost Chapters, uh, Scythe, we, um, we were working on his model and he's actually got some really detailed um, images on, on his uh, armour but um, from the original model you really, it was really difficult to actually tell what they were so we actually went back <laughs> and looked at the original concept art yeah. to figure out what it was that the guys were trying to create in there. So we've now been able to go back through and actually create really detailed armor for him. And speaking of concept art, that's obviously another great platform for Smart Glass that we can throw in all this concept art from 10 years ago and give people a glimpse into the, the history of the original Fable title. You want in? You better talk to me. As you can see, we've still got the original voice acting uh, with the wide me? range nice of... Uh, British dialects <laughs> that we yeah. have throughout. This here is Twin Blades Camp. The voice acting has always been such a crucial part of Fable, and obviously Fable, Fable One and Fable Lost Chapters really set the tone for the rest of the franchise. So the Monty Python feel is still there. We really wanted to maintain faithful to the original title for the uh, dialogue. So again, anyone not familiar with the uh, Fable franchise? You've always got a lot of choice within Fable. Um, this is a perfect example in this region. As you're coming through, you're trying to uh, infiltrate the bandit camp, and uh, there are there's at least three or four ways to uh, to progress through into the next region here. Uh, we keep finding every now and again we'll we'll find actually some some extra ways that we never even realised were there. Um, the testers will come up and say, "Yeah, this is working there again." 
Oh, what do you mean it's working? I never knew you could do that in the first <laughs> place. So. Yeah, it's been quite fun to go back and see all these features that, you know, when, uh, when, <laughs> when I reminded the team that you can bribe a guard, you, know, you can go up to a guard and then pay them some money to look the other way. It's kind of like, wow, that feature existed. So again, on Smart Glass, I can click on the uh, screenshot viewer and it will show me what uh, Fable 1 looked like in this particular area. The lighting is obviously a massive difference as well as the textures on the ground, the trees. We've redone every single tree in the game, uh, to, again, to bring it up to modern day standards. I think there's actually a chicken in here somewhere, Craig. It wouldn't be a playthrough of a Fable game without kicking a chicken in high definition. You're putting the pressure on me now. Yeah. See if you, you can kick, was you couldn't not kick easy. the head, but let's see if you can kick the chicken. There, we go. there he is. Can you kick I'm him in the into the fire. Roasted, roasted chicken. chicken. That's oh, an achievement, oh God, is it? This has got, uh, Whoa, straight oh, away. Oh, brutal. Oh, he's on fire and he's running away. <laughs> That's going to be an achievement then. Yeah, though. definitely. We'll go back, write that one down. But, uh, we, you know, we do want to have fun with, with Fable Anniversary, of course. You know, there's loads of memes behind Fable 1. There's lots of, uh, for anyone that remembers the acorn or the sand goose, you know, there's all these things that, oh, it's chasing again, after again. you. <laughs> it's coming for revenge. Brilliant. I'm going to run away. But speaking of chicken kicking, you know, we do want to provide leaderboards to players. That's definitely an ambition of ours so that you can actually see who is the, the furthest chicken kicker in all of Albion. So I wonder, Craig, if we should actually run up to the, uh, the hostages because we actually left the original models in. Uh, for this E3 build to sort of com to actually show people, you know, you've obviously got the hero here who's been completely redone and remodeled, retextured, but we left. We wanted to leave a couple of characters in so we could actually just just for E3 only show the the difference between the two. Let's go and have a look. So again, just like the previous camp and what Craig said, um, this this particular camp also has multiple ways of getting into the next area. One of them is to uh, kill this guy, uh, and oh, you might want to not use your fists. There you go. Oh, crack in the face. Oh. Uh oh. I got him. It's okay, it's fine. And the combat system still holds up to, oh. to this day. It's still really good fun to you know switch between your bow, switch between your sword. You've got hammers, you've got axes, you've got crossbows. Uh, there we go. And now if you go and free the hostages, you'll actually get a chance to see what they look like. <laughs> there they are. so much. They just got no no life to them, you know. They just look like wax <laughs> wax dummies, really. So yeah, now we've opened the final gate. Craig can run through, and we'll show you the uh, twin blade boss fight. And again, I'll, uh, I'll show you something quite cool with what we've done in Smart Grass, actually, when we uh, load up the next region. And again, using Smart Glass, I can click on chests, and it will show me what's in the chest. Uh, in, in the next area, I know there's a resurrection file there, and I have a feeling Craig might need it because uh, Twin Blade <laughs> is certainly good at killing you. <laughs> nice. So again, because it's Fable Lost Chapters content, you've got all these new expressions that we added. For anyone that's not familiar with Fable Lost Chapters, we added 30% more content and a dragon. Bit of a spoiler, but you know, dragons. So that's quite a, dragons quite a awesome. big spoiler. Dragons are awesome. You've got to talk about dragons. So a little bit of fiction, a little bit of backstory of what's happened in the story so far. Um, your sister was kidnapped by some bandits. Uh, you've gone on the hunt to try and find her, and you've made your way all the way through to Twin Blades, who is sort of at this stage the, the, the bandit king, and you're going to have a, a fight with him. So and he's still just as big as he was 10 years ago, which is actually pretty huge. So as a as a Fable fan, uh, this is where we think the Smart Glass application is going to come in really handy because. As you can see on the smart glass, I can click on his face and it will give me just a little bit of extra background story that the game doesn't provide. And you can actually see what he looked like as well in Fable 1. And obviously it looks very, very different to what's on screen right now. So it's an exciting way for us to provide some trivia, some, you know, we can even put in some dev commentary, some Q&A. Uh, I think it's, it's just going to be a really fun uh, piece of technology to utilize this year. And also it's free, which is awesome. <laughs> So unfortunately for Twinblade, the only place on him without armor is his back. What was he thinking? So uh, we'll, we'll try and use that to our advantage. Craig's done this before, though. Yeah. So he can lock on. Oh, oh has he? <laughs> in the face. What was that resurrection bar? I cursed you there. So there we go. There we go. Right. Weak point. Go. 
you know, two swords are only useful when they don't get stuck in the ground. I love the way that, you know, with the fireballs now, they all have, like, dynamic oh, lighting. That, you know, it's just all these things that you just take for granted with modern uh, modern day games. So, yeah, we, we uh, cheated, I guess, to finish them a little bit quickly. Uh, we've uh, overbalanced ourselves for this particular playthrough so we can get through it quickly. But this is where you meet Teresa. For anyone that played Fable 2 and Fable 3 and never played Fable 1, this is where she became famous, essentially. And uh, you can see she's still got her blindfold. These are the original frescoes um, everybody knows and loves. Uh, we've actually spent quite a bit of time trying to track down the uh, high-res images from these for everybody who remembers the, the original ones that were quite compressed to fit onto the, the Xbox. Uh, so we are raiding through attics trying to find the, uh, the original source files. Uh, and quite genuinely raiding through attics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Some of the most important files we wanted were actually found in our creative director's attic that he put there 10 years ago. So, yeah, once we got all the dust off, it was usable. So just to quickly mention some other things that we're uh, currently addressing, we're trying to get loading times to less than three seconds, really. The current design is that it just fades out and it fades back in uh, rather than having like a, a big loading screen. The whole save system is brand new for anyone that played the original title. They might remember that it wasn't great. Uh, you could lose progress because uh, when you actually saved mid-quest, there was just never the ability to uh, actually load directly back into that quest. You had to restart it. Uh, so we've now got a checkpoint system to utilise. And yeah, we're just you know, really looking forward to bringing just it back to people's uh, lives because it's a very nostalgic title with a huge fan base behind it. Fable Anniversary is out holiday 2013.